All right, picking up where we left off in the last video where we learned how to include categorical values, you may have noticed that I left in here the column predictions. This is what we came up with after our very first uh, model that was just based on age, BMI, and children. We really should, and not really should, we must actually drop that column before we come up with our MLR down here because it's going to inflate our... Uh, our, um, or mess up all of our coefficients because we're using a predicted value to predict charges. So anyway, let's come down here and drop not only the label, but also the predictions column. Run this one one more time. There we go. Uh, this looks better. And now let's interpret our coefficients here. We still have the 75% R squared. But as before, remember age, as people get older, they cost $256 more for every year older. Now notice how this coefficient changed once we included all of these categorical features in the model. Previously, it was 239 or 240. Now it's increased and gone up. And that's common because we bring in these variables and they account for some of the other variants and charges that age didn't account for, which leaves a smaller percent left for age to explain, making the coefficient get a little larger and p-value a bit smaller. Uh, it looks like BMI and children have gone through similar changes. They both, well, let's see, BMI went up a bit and children actually went down a little bit. So that can happen as we add other variables. These coefficients can go either down or up, depending on how much these variables are correlated with these variables and, all, and, and how much additional variance they explain in the label. If you want sort of a refresher on this or, or what's going on, um, then I encourage you to take a look back in the book. Uh, specifically at this, um, oops, let me fix that. There we go. And this diagram right here. So this is our label charges, and as we add other variables in, they explain some new part of charges, but also have some overlap with the existing variables, which causes coefficients to change possibly up or down. Anyway, what I want to do now, though, is make it to where the coefficients are comparable. As it is, because they're all on different scales, I can't say that gender is playing a smaller role than age, BMI, and children because they're on completely different scales. Uh, same thing with smoker and, and region. Although I can compare across regions, and actually I can compare all these together because they're all zero ones, they're on the same scale. I can't compare any of them to these. So what we want to do is standardize or normalize the, the scales or the ranges of these values here. So to do that, we're going to import a new package from, this time from Scikit-Learn. Now later on in the book, we're going to use Scikit-Learn almost entirely, and we won't use stats models uh, at all, but uh, we'll worry about that later. For now, from Scikit-Learn import, um, let's get pre-processing. Okay, and then let's create a new data frame. We'll start with the z-score normalization or standardization and oops dfz score we're going to set this equal to pd dot data frame we'll make a new data frame and let's pass in preprocessing dot standard scalar and we're going to call call standard scalar the fit transform method and we'll pass in the original data frame and then let's say columns equal uh, df columns. So I'm standardizing everything including the label. All right let's take a look at what that looks like. Spell everything right we'll find out here. There we go. Uh, once again I've got predictions in here. I'm gonna have to make sure I take that out before we run our model but you'll notice that Everything is, uh, the, the way a, a standardization process or a z-score works is that it sets the mean of each column equal to zero, and then the value of each column is going to be set to the number of standard deviations away from the mean. So these are all negative, which means they're going to be below the mean. Uh, positives here, these are all above the mean. But since normally distributed features, the 99.7% you know, of the data is within three standard deviations, most of our values are going to be within plus or minus three. 
And in fact, if we see anything higher than three or lower than negative three, we know that we're looking at an outlier that could potentially be removed, but we'll worry about that for another day. So let's go ahead and rerun our model uh, using this one. Let's set y equal to df uh, z score dot charges. Set our x equal to df z score. And I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. Um, I'm going to, let's see here. I've got everything dummy coded. So actually, no, I, there's no categorical values for me to drop, but I do need to drop my predictions. So you only need to do this if you included predictions in your, in your uh, back in your data frame like we did a couple of videos ago. Um, predictions. Um, and then I'm going to say dot assign const equals one so I can get a y-intercept. I'm going to combine my results and model fit all into one. Equal stats models dot OLS y x uh, dot fit print results dot summary. Let's see what we got. Um, oh, <laughs> I left charges in there too. Can't do that. Predicting charges from itself gives us an R squared of one. So I drop predictions and charges. There we go. All right, good. So my R squared is exactly the same as it was before. And this is a point I wanted to make is that standardizing doesn't improve or change our prediction at all. In fact, it doesn't even change the uh, uh, distribution. So for example, let's import Seaborn as SNS. And oops, not that, SNS. And let's print out an SNS dot his plot and pass in uh, the latest y. This is the z-scored version of charges. All right, this histogram, you might remember, is exactly the same as it was before we did any changes. Let's go to the original df dot charges. So you can see they're identical. Doesn't change the distribution. Well, why do we do it then? What's the point? Well, what it's done is it's made it to where our coefficients are now comparable. They're all on the same scale. So I can look at these and say, ah, age has a larger coefficient, larger effect than BMI. Uh, BMI more than children, children more than gender. Smoker, though, by far has the biggest effect on people's insurance charges. And I can directly compare these. Uh, no need to use the p-value as a surrogate there to compare uh, effect sizes, which p-value is really meant for um, assessing whether or not these results were due to chance anyway. So we standardized to make the coefficients more interpretable. Now, I showed you a z-score. This was kind of, z-score sort of, we call that the standardization approach. It's more common in the past. Uh, these days, most machine learning um, uh, uh, practitioners prefer, let me copy this here, prefer actually using the min-max normalization. So we call z-score standardization. Uh, we're going to use min-max and change this to min-max. Let's change the name of our data frame, min-max. Hit transform df, change this, min-max. There we go. So with this one, uh, it changes it from a zero to one. Um, with the zero becoming the new min score and one becoming the, or the previous min score and one becoming the previous max score. So everything will vary between those values. It doesn't affect or change dichotomous variables at all because they're already set to zero one. Um, but you'll notice that once again, it does not affect the distribution. I'm trying to copy, there we go. Let's change this to df min max dot charges. There we go. Still looks exactly like everything did before. And it will also mean, I'm going to copy all of this. It will mean that our r squared will once again be the same. Let's change this to df min max. We got everything in there? I think so. 
k is still the same r squared, uh, and still now the same relative difference among coefficients as we had before, uh, but it's just on a different scale. Uh, so still smoker by far the largest one, still sex is the smallest one. Um, so again, standardization, it's great for helping us compare coefficients, doesn't affect our predictions, doesn't uh, change any of the distributions, and it won't, it won't improve the prediction at all. But it's useful for interpretation. And there will be other algorithms that we'll learn later on that do benefit greatly and improve their predictions based on uh, when the data has been standardized. So it's a useful technique to learn.